90 kilometers with migrant hope, jottings while shooting the exodus of migrant laborers following the announcement of the lockdown. My first impression is how fast they walk, frictionless, pulled towards the direction of their home, towards a sliver of hope, towards even a rumor that there will be a bus. Kids walk faster to keep pace with their parents. Mothers with infants on their waists, sacks on their heads, walking with their mouths covered by their sari pallus. I notice that they don't fall back in the group. None is out of breath. Families walk in groups formed by their destinations. There is no leader, no instructions, yet they stop, rest, and then get up to walk all at once, wordlessly, like the synchronic movement of a shoal of fish. There are times when just a set of eyes silence and wipe away every word, every filter of the mind. Nothing you can say matters. You press the shutter release button, diminished, humbled by the awe of the unspoken. But now, listening with your gaze. In the middle of a large group, their sacks, buckets, backpacks bobbing up and down as they walk. A young infant, not perfectly balanced on the arm of his mother, breaks into smiles looking at the shadows that look like sack-shaped heads with bodies. Silhouetting the bags and the sacks on the heads of the migrant laborers, the gleaming high-rise buildings on the expressway, they appear blotted. As my car passes them by, their eyes turn towards it, linger for a moment and turn back. I fear slowing down. I fear giving hope. A lone family, exhausted by walk and waiting, far out on the empty expressway. They look as if stranded in deep waters. Agra, where they are headed, is distant and beyond the looming night. We have nothing to offer them except digestive biscuits. Won't it make them more thirsty? I think, as I hand over a packet hesitatingly. Soon I realize that the biggest discomfort is not the fatigue of walking so much, but the shoe or the slipper not meant to be walked so much in. Further ahead is a group of five, one of them with a polio leg, hobbling his way wearing a purple shirt and a fluorescent smile. How far do you aim to go like this? Till Agra. Par kyu? Yaha kya karenge? Sab paise bhi khatm ho gaye. I follow them for five minutes and want to help. Ye rakh lo. Raaste mein kaam aayega. I offer them a 500 rupee note. They all stop. Slowly surround me. Two of them with folded hands. Iski zarurat nahi hai sir. Please ye mat dijiye. Aapne pooch liya yehi kafi hai. As they walk past and he limps past, I feel a deep embarrassment for not being able to do more than offer some money. I roll up the windows and get into a chat with the driver to cover it up. Is this real? In the middle of a collapsing world, a young kid is resting on his bag, wearing his headphones and metallic sunglasses even as the others are desperate for a ride home. Youthful abandon or a resident millennial of a virtual island. Surreal, so typically India. I meet the same woman I met a couple of hours ago walking on the expressway. Her resolute expression has given way to worry lines by now. I don't see her child. Where is the little one, I gesture. She points to her lap, where she is shielding him from the cold under the skin of her sari, the pallu of which she is using as a mask. I can't photograph her. The light is too low. About to give up, I see a car approaching. I position my camera, waiting for its headlight beam to light up her worried face. 
On the road is this young kid, more middle class in appearance, resting on his backpack. His younger sister is sitting on the edge of the pavement. As I bend to take his picture, his body reflexes to get up, but is pinned down by fatigue. He averts his gaze from the camera, as if to blank me out. They have walked to Noida about 18 kilometers all the way from Srinivaspuri, where they were evicted out by the landlord, informs the anguished mother as she catches up. The kids are not used to walking so much, she says. There is a large group resting just below the flyover that comes from the Yamuna Expressway and joins the Noida Expressway. The moment I get out of the car, with my press card hanging from my neck, they see me as some government official and panic. All of them disperse like startled pigeons, jump over the railing and start walking on the flyover which is headed towards Agra. Kaha ja rahe ho? I ask a group of young men who ease up seeing me take pictures. It is a group headed to Gorakhpur I get to know, on their way to catch a bus from Parichok in Greater Noida. But Parichok is down the road on the opposite side. The flyover will take them on the wrong side and they won't get to know until they reach the police barrier, almost two kilometers away. I shout as I see nearly 60 odd weary people move away with their loads and their children. Two of the youngsters run after them shouting. One calls up someone on the phone, but they carry on the shoal of fish. I look at them helplessly as they transform into long shadows under the mustard lights of the sodium lamps. Shadowy forms with unshapely loads of humble belongings on their heads. Wait, I have seen this before. The black and white images of partition. Refugees walking with similar loads on their heads flash in my mind. This is the second partition. These are the have-nots ousted from the land of the haves. Our fear-infected cities have cuffed them out on the road.